honoree. He was raised by his grandmother and went to Union Academy. He was a two-sport star, but really chose the path less traveled. Instead of Florida A&M, he opted for Southern Illinois. From there, it was off to the NFL, first with the St. Louis Cardinals, from whom he appeared in the 19, for whom he appeared in the 1965 Pro Bowl. I think that was uh, 65. Bob Donahue, wasn't uh, Packers won one of their national championships? I think so. Anyway, then it was on to the New York Giants, and finally, the San Francisco 49ers. What a career. That was just amazing. When his time on the gridiron ended, the defensive lineman turned into the academic. Dr. Sam Silas, a dean at William Preston College, excuse me, William Patterson College, in New Jersey, went on to bigger and to better things. When retirement loomed, he knew where he would go. Back to the home his grandmother had built in 1954, as he told her, he always would, that's home. Welcome to the stage, Dr. Sam Silas. Well, I must admit, it's a lot more comfortable for me sitting out there than standing here. For more reasons than one, people tell me that I have aged, and uh, I feel it, but it's a lot more comfortable taking it in rather than pouring it out. I thought about what I wanted to do since uh, I was going to end up here for a second or so. And I thought that if I could make any kind of contribution, it would be in the form of a confession. A lot of people, I've been coming to, I've been back in town now uh, for 12 years, so I, I've been coming around often. I, I, I'm getting to know Lakeland again, slowly. The, uh, the thing that I thought since I've enjoyed this area so much and coming back as I thought I would, I thought that it probably would be in order to do to you guys what I would want you to do to me were you up here. If you had been somebody whom the public had said was a success in any kind of way, sitting out there in the audience, I would want to know what you did to exceptionalize yourself. So if I'm here, I assume that there might be at least one person who thinks, who is so misled, that they think that I have done something decent, that I'm here uh, standing before you. If there is at least one of you, then I'm right. I thought about what I would uh, do. Uh, in my way of thinking, I'd make a contribution. In a very brief note, I think it would probably be worth my while or I would have been successful were I to tell you who I am and who I am not and who I have been all of my life. Uh, that might help you in making the same determination. In a very brief word, I'm a copier. I have spent a lifetime copying people whom I admired. As I examine myself, I don't think that I'm ashamed to admit it, but I don't see anything so great about myself, except that maybe I am one of the great copiers of all time. 
I am so many personalities wrapped up into one. I have spent a lifetime stealing good traits embedded in people. The traits that I thought were bad, I discarded those. But I did try to take the good traits and I tried to emulate those people. And I've had a lifetime of success doing it. So I have concluded that it's not a bad way to go if in fact you can <laughs> humble yourself to say that you don't have a mind of your own. You shape your personality based on what you like in others. And that's what I have done. So all of you who have anything to do with me directly or indirectly can look at me and perhaps see yourself. You have shaped me. I have been successful at doing it, but again, I can't take the credit for it. I'm given the credit in many instances, but I can't take the credit because it wasn't me who was performing. I was pretending to be the better, the better version of you. You can't imagine how many different people I am in the run of a day. I look for people, I look for their, their good points. I've done it over the years. And uh, I pretend, what would they do? What would they say? How would they act? We have a gentleman here uh, tonight. I guess by now he's beginning to wonder, uh, when is it that I cast such a spell on this fellow because he kind of, he likes me. <laughs> He even talks about how he does things and what he remembers. That's Coach Corbett. Now, when I was under his tutelage as a student athlete, we were all too busy trying to win games. In the classroom, we were too busy trying to earn A's. We were always busy doing something productive. We never got a chance to pass on the message that uh, really I admire what you're about and whom you are about. But that is my life. That is what I have been. That's the only way I know to be now. So I come before you. I thank you for allowing me to be here. And most importantly, I really do thank you for shaping me to be the person that I've turned out to be. Uh, if by unfortunate circumstance you look up one day and you see something negative about me, none of us are perfect, uh, you might want to take part of the credit for that too. <laughs> because you shaped me. You say, well, you don't have a mind of your own. So, well, I can't really say I have much of a mind of my own because I have always done things that I thought others would do, only I've tried to do it better. To do that, I had to know who you are. So I've spent a lifetime trying to outdo people whom I admired the most. And uh, all of you have had a great effect, especially Polk County, during the formative years. Being raised here, this being home, during the time I was most malleable, this is the time when I was shaped the most. And it was people like you who did it. So if you look up here and you see a halfway decent person, a little bit of glitter, pat yourself on the back. You did a good job. If otherwise, uh, maybe we flunk the test together. Thank you very much.